We're on our knees, crying out to you. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. Let your kingdom come. We're on our knees. We turn to you. We lay our lives down. We're laying our lives down. Let Your will be done. You come and save us. Your ways are higher. Nothing is higher. Glorify Your Son. Let Your kingdom come. Let Your will be done. As we bow before you now, come and lead this land with your mighty hand. As our hearts all cry as one, Holy Spirit, let your glory fall. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to Social Distancing Live. We've got a very special edition of Social Distancing Live. And as a sports fan and a Welsh rugby fan, I'm very, very excited uh, that we've got Garen Jenkins on the programme, who we'll be introducing to you in just a moment. Uh, before we do, as is customary on Social Distancing Live, I'd just like to say hello to you. And please let us know where you're watching from. Please say hello and where you're watching from. And if you want to, uh, I've got a question for Garen at all, please pop them in the, in the comments uh, section and I'll try and get it to him throughout the course of the program so firstly hello to frank westall i must declare an interest that is of course is my dad hi dad uh, hello to my beautiful wife anna she's on the comment section she's mon a moderator on the comment section tonight so please say hello to anna as well hello to mum mum's on the emojis again 
Uh, there you go. Hello to Bula Cheeseman. How are you doing? And of course, uh, even Gateway Church is saying evening, Rob. And we are actually streaming tonight on Gateway Church Abergavenny's uh, Facebook page as well as as well as my own on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook as well. So um, let's have a look. Who else have we got here? We've got Cat Mills, friend of the program and fellow artist Cat Mills. Evening to Cat and Ali and the family there down in Worcester Park uh, near Wimbledon. And hello to Mark Small. Mark says evening looking forward um all, looking forward to this evening garen is always good to listen to great testimony plus robbie of course oh bless you mark thank you very much um mark's allowed to call me robbie because he used to teach me in sunday school many years ago <laughs> hello to louise ingle louise and glenn ingle hope you're well there and uh, fantastic evening to gavin from the ronda hi gavin hope you're well and um that's just part of the tradition here gavin's a regular and we always say hello to gavin from the ronda in case you case you're worrying oh the the banter started already but I'll, I'll wait until gavin's on before we get that in fact let's Let's uh, go to the great man himself now um, in just a moment. I just want to let you know tomorrow night we've got a special program as well. We've got Mr. Di Woolridge is on at 8pm tomorrow, so please pop that in your diary as well. And um, hello to Jonathan Roberts uh, from Abertillery, but now... Uh, down in Lincoln or up in Lincoln whichever way you want to do it it's, it's quite a Welsh thing to say down in Lincoln isn't it but um, Jonathan serving in the RAF there hi, and uh, my cousin as well hi Jonathan hope you're well buddy um, and a massive massive rugby fan so let's say hello Garin how are you doing good evening how are you Rob alright I'm yeah, very good, good indeed you. and um, where where are you this evening where, where, where is home for you uh, and it's a bull uh, large uh Large city just north of Pontypridd. <laughs> Pontypridd is a suburb, I understand, of Annisable. Yes, I think so. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, sitting comfortable in the in the middle room. Lovely, lovely. Well, I I just want to say um, hello to a few people, and a few people want to say hello to you as well. So I'll get some of the comments in as we be doing throughout the course of the evening. Um, so um, Gavin Gavin Owen, who I gather you know, says evening, um, and uh, but Glenn. Hi, Glenn Ingle has started on the banter already. Glenn is a friend of mine. He goes to Abergavenny um, Gateway Church and says, Wales play rugby? Question mark. So, oh, dear me. Glenn, I think you're more of a football man than a rugby man, though, to be fair. So there you go. Um, good evening, Jen Howells. Jen Howell says hello. Jordana Roberts. Hi, Jordana. Welcome to Social Distancing Live. Hello to Bex Kendall. Um, my wife, Anna, says hello, Garin. And... Um, um, I'll introduce you to Anna off air afterwards properly, Garin, as well. Um, okay. Jen Howell says, hello, Garin, and welcome, um, as does Bula Thank Cheeseman. You. So, so Garin, I want to get um, straight into it this evening, and um, you've got an incre- you had an incredible career on the pitch, and I listen to you when Wales play rugby. I have the radio commentary on, and I watch the picture. Um, and um, we met many years ago, and it was a, such an encouragement to me to meet you um, because we share a faith in Jesus, don't we? And um, it was just so encouraging to to meet you. One, because I'm a massive rugby fan and you were one of my heroes growing up because I used to support Pontypool. <laughs> and secondly, um, to, to, to know that you're on the same team, so to speak. So um, so it's really, really cool. Um, Dean Patton, uh, Patton Den says hello, by the way. Says hello. Hello, Dean. Welcome to oh, Social Hi, Dean. Distancing. All right, I'm speaking to Dean today. <laughs> I was speaking to Dean today. Brilliant. So evening to Alan Cathy Nicholson, who are watching from New Zealand today. So hello, good evening to you. So Garin, your career um, was, a, you know, an incredible one looking back. How do you look back on it now? Um, and, and you've always had some time to reflect on your career, um, incredible career. How, would, how do you look on it and view it now? Uh, just very thankful, you know, Rob, to... You know, I grew up uh, in Anisabul and, in fact, played uh, junior school rugby. And Dean, who, who just came on there, I can remember playing against him for Kilvanid, which was a, a, a local school uh, that we used to beat quite regularly. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, it's just great, really. So thankful growing up uh, in South East Wales um, and just sport. Just wanted to be part of a team, really. I, I was into rugby, football, boxing, running, any sport really that uh, you were part of a team and and just felt part of something really and just just incredible really when you, you know, I can still remember watching 
the first rugby game in coloured uh, viewing and it was almost you could see the grass coming out of the television you know and the excitement and that stirring in your stomach just give me well just I just loved it really and it was was just uh, you know the only thing really I liked doing up to a certain age and and to become part of the Pontypool front row of course is is was that a proud moment for you Fantastic. Uh, to, to be asked to go and play for Pontypool was uh, a great privilege. Um, I had spent a bit of time in New Zealand. I joined Pontypool um, out of youth, uh, went to Pontypool, and to play for the athletic team then was a great privilege when you had the greats, um, you know, under Ray Prosser, who sadly passed away last week. You know, like Sir Bobby Wins, uh, Staff Jones, Graham Price, John Perkins, Chris Hewis, Steve Jones. To name so many great forwards, mm. and uh, it was a conve- conveyor belt, really, for forward production. If you ever wanted to serve a front row apprenticeship, then Pontypool was probably the best place in the world to do that. Uh, good evening to Nolan Nicklin. He says, "Evening, uh, GJ and Rob." Um, ha- Nolan um, plays himself. I think Nolan's involved in coaching Tradiga. I think at the moment. So, um, good evening, Nolan. Welcome, welcome. Thank good you evening, for sharing. Nolan. And uh, Mark Small says, Hi again, Gary. We met a number of times. My cousin Simon, who you visit from time to time in a work capacity. Um, oh, yeah, Mark. All right. There you go. And Gavin Owen says, Didn't Max Boyce do a song about the Pontypool front row? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got well, a question. Yeah, Sorry, he go actually on. Made a song. He actually made a song about me in the World Cup uh, when I got gouged. I don't know if you've got that photo here tonight, Rob. But, I sadly uh, haven't that got was, that, uh, but... that. That was quite funny, you know. That was quite funny. I think it went... Um, um, I think Colin Chavez scored the try against Argentina and I I only ever touched the ball to throw in, in the line-out, but I did touch the ball <laughs> on this occasion in um, in the opening game of the World Cup and I, I slipped but kept the ball in touch and I think... That, that was funny to be sitting in this room and you and Max Boyce make a song I think he said and used to Garen Jenkins whose run set up the try and then an Argentinian come and poked him in the <laughs> eye and it went on like that you know so it was just great to be part of a verse you know that amazing all fun and all all part of the journey isn't it folklore absolute folklore that is I've got a pit, I've got a oh. picture actually from that game and I must thank Hugh Evans picture agency for very kindly giving us the rights to be able to show some of these pictures I've not got that gouge picture unfortunately but I've but this was um this was in that game I believe um in the opening game of the 99 World Cup um and uh, is that yeah, Contepomi uh... is that Contepomi um no Augustine Pichot. Pichot, he's coming across there. On to the stop. left, yeah, yeah. That was an 80 yard run to the to the line, wasn't it, Gary? In there, looking at it. It's like I'm, it's like I'm cutting my sandwiches, but there, isn't it? I don't want to share them. <laughs> Brilliant. So, I mean, going going back, obviously, Pontypool. I've got a question that has come in. Somebody's texted in. Um, Daniel Holloway, who, who was a massive Pontypool fan. And um, he says, who was the best Pontypool player that you played with? And did you enjoy your time at Pontypool? Oh, fantastic. Uh, and it's br- brilliant uh, club. I used to be nervous in the car driving over from Anisabul because there were so many greats in the changing room that I'd grown up in the 70s and, and early 80s watching. And just to be in the changing room as a as a young man and uh, as, I, as I mentioned there you know when we join a rugby team it's like anything we want to be part of something it? because ultimately we are created you know and we, we, we want to be loved we're created to, to, to be together and you know I think a lot of young men like me sort of gravitated to sport and being part of a team is, is, is fantastic but just to sit around the changing room and see these greats was um, you know I still get uh, you know the, the the sort of butterflies in the stomach thinking, but I always remember driving over and the Grotto Run, which was a, a world famous run where you sort of you trained up up, up two hills really, and uh, that was always tough. So I was always nervous before even going to training. Marvelous, and 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 did you have any? I mean, heroes growing up. Who were your influences? 
you know, when you when rugby came, became quite serious for you and you knew that was the way you were going, did you have any who were the, who were the players that you looked up to and admired and, and inspired you? Uh, so many, uh, you know, there was a few Pontypool players that you you watched playing for Wales. There was Delmi Thomas, who played for uh, Llanelli Scarlets in Wales. Uh, so many uh, players that you sort of looked up to, and generally in them days, Rob, if you went to Pontypool, then I used to watch Pontypool, and you know, giving somebody time, I can always remember. You'd always look on the programme if there was uh, somebody with the same surname, Jenkins. And I can remember having Gareth Jenkins' his autograph once. And, um, you know, he was a good player. But I loved that player because he took time out to sign my autograph. And sometimes when we do things, you don't realise the impact that it has on people and how it encourages people and when you give a little bit of time. it might, You know, there was times in my career, I, you know, when I... But you give a little child a pair of socks or a pair of shorts, and you never know where that's going to go, you know. And sure. I just, I just feel, um, you know, people who encourage me, they uh, through the years, that's what kept me going. Because my father was a, um, uh, you know, he, he always encouraged me. My my great uncle uh, was was a rugby player. There was, you know, there's plenty of sport in the family, but my father wasn't a rugby player. So, you know, you know, to get encouraged by by people down and around meant so much and mm. uh, they really inspired me really and kept me uh, kept me um, hungry then really to, to, to drive and, and fulfil like, like, like I said we all created you know uh, with, with special gifts I, I believe I always had passion mm. and um, I, and still I, I, a lot of that passion as you can see throughout my rugby career was was misdirected in the wrong direction like you know, I got some great records. I was the first man in British rugby to go in the sin bin three times. Um, <laughs> I'm one of one of seven Welsh players to get sent off in our 130 year history. So I got all the great accolades, <laughs> sporting wise, after my name. But um, I suppose, you know, I think that's that's key. You know, we we we've, we've all got gifting, and and sometimes my passion was directed wrongly, but. Um, I'm so thankful looking back that you've come through all that, you know. Hmm, sure. Um, um, we'll get back on track in just a second. I just want to put a few questions uh, for the people watching, if that's okay with you. Um, Nolan Nicklin says, really sad news about Ray Prosser. I wonder what impact he had on Gar Garin's career at Pontypool. Um, you know, well, I can remember going there first as an 18-year-old and playing for the Athletic, and I can always remember... Uh, Ray, um, you know, he just stuck his head in my face and just said, "Cool, you got a big round head," and uh, <laughs> that was my nickname, really. But that that was a that was that was an affection in Pontypool. You know, it was it was there was an article in the Guardian this week, and all the nicknames, which probably some of them are unprintable, but um, Ray called me rounded and. Uh, um, I'm 55 next year now, and that name has still stuck with me. You know, and it's not—it's not the coolest of nicknames. Um, you know, when you're a young man and you walk in somewhere and somebody blurts out "rounded," but uh, you know, I'm thankful for Ray because he used to phone my uh, house up. I was living at home then in Anisabul, and he'd spend half an hour, 40 minutes, talking to my mother, you know, and saying how, how um, if he came to Pontypool. You'd play for Wales, and and you know we uh, it, there was there was there was a real genuineness about Ray, uh, and he used to speak to my mother and father when he was getting me over to Pontypool, but that was one of my great moments. And I said this week um, uh, there was a, a selection committee, um, which were called the Big Five um, in the seventies, eighties, and early nineties. And they basically picked the Welsh team. And I can remember playing for Pontypool at South Wales Police and scoring two tries. Uh, and Rod Morgan, the late Rod Morgan, was there in the, you know, and I walked in the in the clubhouse, you know, feeling quite buoyant after scoring two tries. And I hadn't played for no, I hadn't represented my country at any level up until then because, you know, I'd had uh, 
I'd, uh, I'd played rugby all through school, but you know, I'd, I'd sort of disregarded my schooling. I, you know, I, I ended up in a school uh, near to where where you are, Rob, um, uh, up in Abergavenny, uh, mm. for a period. So I wasted my my schooling career. So, you know, all of a sudden I'm playing for a great club like Plumpton Pool, and mm. you know, I, I scored two tries against South Wales Police. I walked through the the clubhouse, and. Um, Ray was there, he was talking to one of the big five selectors and he says, shouts over, round head, round head. <laughs> so I toddled over, uh, come here, he said, round head, sit down by there, he said. So this is uh, Rod Morgan, he said, one of the big five selectors, he said. Uh, Rod, he said, uh, round, round head's going to play for Wales, he said. And I never forget that conversation. There was like three of us sitting on the table and you know, really thankful that um, you know Ray Ray was right in his um, uh, observation. I I ended up playing fifty nine times and being involved about eighty odd times for Wales. So wow. I'm going back again, Rob. What I said earlier, encouragement, isn't it? Hmm. People don't realise when they're encouraging someone. Uh, you, you know, you don't sometimes a um, a simple act of kindness, a simple word. Can can um, can encourage someone, and you know what I found in life. I've had plenty of hidings, but the things that have hurt me most are words. And wow. when people, um, uh, how can you say, um, uh, disregard you and 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 different things, and it's it's not it doesn't develop a chip on your shoulder, mm. you know, because I've always been quite passionate and 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 you know quite quite a good work ethic. But when you when you know when and and that's important and I I look back and I I got really fond memories of of my time at Pontypool. You know there was another player, Steve Jones, who sadly passed away. He was such an encouragement as a you know a former captain. I think Steve played over five hundred games for Pontypool. You know you had Bobby Windsor, John Perkins, another. So you, you know it was a very humble. Um, setting and uh, nobody really you know got above the station and hence you know the collective effort of everybody involved over the years way before I joined Pontypool was uh, you know the, the reason why they were so successful over a over a sustained period sure and, club. and for someone like Ray to, to recommend you as well and have it you know with the background like you just referred to is, is incredible isn't it and it must have been massively encouraging to you at, at such a young age um, the the question um, here from Mark Small is uh, which we will get, we might get on to later my question is at the height of your career how easy I think I think Mark means how easy was it to witness to the team? What was their reaction to your faith? Because of course, um, if you're tuning in tonight, Garen Jenkins, Welsh rugby legend, is our special guest tonight, talking about his career, life, and faith. And Garen, uh, we 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 said at the start of the show, we know we we share the same faith. We follow Jesus. Um, when did when did you become a Christian? Let's talk about first of all. Let's let's talk about how that happened and and, and your journey really to that point before we get get to Mark's question. Um... You know, the answer. I've had a foot in, bo- in both camps all my life, Rob. Um, mm. You know, I've never ever disbelieved, and I'm glad you said faith. I got a faith I have, and uh, it's it's great that we have that choice. Um, uh, I went to Sunday school uh, as a young boy. Uh, always prayed uh, as a young boy, um, and and people you, they only see the sportsman, don't they? They don't see mm. the times where you've got to put your head on the pillow when you've got struggles and, you know, the, all the bravado that, that goes, goes you know, with, with, with certain aspects of life. But no, I, I always pray that and I'm, I'm not a good person. I'm, I'm, I'm a work in progress. Um, <laughs> I don't perceive to be good. I'm a, you know, I'm, 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 I am a work in progress and I've got many faults, uh, as, as many will tell you. But I've, I've always prayed, Rob, uh, as a young boy, um, you know, went to Sunday school. I can always remember uh, being in my nan's house in Clitheroe as a young boy. I used to go up, and I, she always had a photo of Jesus Christ on on her bedroom wall. Mm. And I don't know what it was. It was just something that always made me, um, I don't say fearful is right, but a recognition of because we always grew up, didn't we, to say our prayers and mm. and you know we went to Sunday school uh, and and. 
but you know that doesn't mean that I wasn't a good person and not a good person. But um, just always prayed, Rob, and um, and as I said earlier, but they always wanted to be part of a team. Uh, mm. You know, played sport. I did boxing, tennis, swimming, anything. I just loved sport, um, and and you know even you know now I enjoy the Christmas time, the sporting um, festivals. I enjoy watching and and being involved. But um, I just 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 like to answer the question, sort of thing. How did I witness? Am I a good witness? I'm not sure. I think you know. I think I think it's it's your actions, really. I feel as a sportsman, um, I sort of didn't really shirk training or always would put my body on the line. And I think that sometimes speaks more long term than actually ranting because you know we see coaches we see players who, who talk the talk but don't actually um are not consistent in walking it well, you know we're going to fall down I'm, I'm i'm a believer and you know i fall down many times and i'm just so thankful that um you know i i i and we've got a savior uh who is um accessible to everyone yeah, uh, that absolutely picks a hand gives us a hand up every time we fail you know and and just picks us up and and you know that's not an excuse to to consistently do wrong mm. as i said i'm a work in progress but i can remember the early days rob um like i said i i put my family through a tough period that a loving mother and father who was sadly passed the passed to to, uh, to glory and i just um you know, I, I just like I said, I, I I didn't go to school. I ended up in a in a private school where you mm. never came home in the evening, and they locked the door and and, <laughs> and different things. So I sort of experienced that, which and I can remember crying there one night as a young young boy and and praying, thinking I just I can remember the the because you had um, it was like a working farm, so you had lads there mm. from like I think from twelve, thirteen to eighteen. So there was a uh, um, you know, a, a big difference in age group, especially at that age. So, and you know, I'd, I'd, like I said, I had a couple of um, run-ins, a couple of um, uh, let's say beatings, that's dramatizing. Uh, that, but but I can remember, you know, crying myself to sleep one night, and I remember a, a number of years ago when I was forty, to sit in and, and just reflecting and. And going back, I'd had a bit of a struggle with my neck. I'd had um, uh, 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 something wrong with my neck. And I'd just come out of hospital and I was thinking, wow. I remember sitting there in reflection and not audible, remembering. And I, I was taken back to that time because worry is uh, something that comes, it doesn't give you any warning. And I was, uh, and, 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 and it, it's, it's a, it is a sin. Worry is a sin, and people say, "Well, why, why is worry a sin?" Because worry, we, you know, we can come knocking at any time. And thankfully, I got a faith where you know it's clear because I serve a living God that is clear. Worry is is something that robs us of the now, and how many times we do get robbed of it. But I was sitting there, I can remember in reflection, thinking, "Wow." Well, you know, I was in desperate need when I prayed out as a 12, 13 year old. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm sitting here, thankfully, being blessed to, to, to recover from certain things. Um, and that's, and, and, and I've, 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 you know, I've gone, I've met prime ministers, the Queen, I played in, in stadiums all over the world. And I thought that was impossible when I was crying myself to sleep there mm. as a 12 or 13 year old. And I don't, um, yeah, you've got to work, but I'm just so thankful and feel so blessed that, you know, whatever was given to me to, 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 to do that, then I just felt so reassured that, that uh, I serve a living God that has helped me and strengthened me and got me to uh, 54 years young. And I trust that, uh, mm. you know, that... Um, you know the the best is to come for me. You talk about the past and and whatever. The thing is, you know, we must never be anchored to our past. Sure, We're thankful yeah. to our past for whatever it is. My past is good and bad. You know, if you've seen, you know, if you could display on the back of this wall everything I thought and done, then I wouldn't be 
a sporting rugby hero, you know, and that's all of us. And that's, yeah. you know, that's the great thing, you know, we, we, we mustn't hide things, it's, it's what's and all, you know, and, and the living word says, one day all will be revealed. You know, and I, you know, and 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 I just, I'm just so thankful. And it's, it's, it's not a morbid chat; it's truthful chat. Sure. It's, 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 it's the truth. You know, we can't put things into a drawer and expect them to stay there forever. Mm. Someone will open that drawer. But I'm not anchored to my past. I'm, like I said, I, you know, I get get myself open. I'm not, uh, you know, a great, great person. You know, I've got, I've got qualities i'm blessed with with things and i got faults because every every human has mm. faults absolutely you know every human there's there's lovely people there's lovely christian people there's lovely non-christian people love isn't just um just um how can you say uh, bound to the boundaries of a church in fact i've been to some churches that that love is is non-existent you know, you've got the preaching of the word, and what did Jesus Christ say? He said, "Words without action are worthless." If you've got love, I forget what um, part of scripture, but if you've got love, you've got nothing. You can have all the the religious preachings. You know, that is the greatest command. Mm -hmm. The greatest command is love. Love God with all your heart, and do unto your neighbour as you'd expect unto yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the challenge, Rob, isn't it? Absolutely. For me, I, I'm I'm talking a good game. But it's easy to look. You're all right. I love you. You're okay. But <laughs> joking, I am. But but the challenge the challenge for us is to love people that are difficult to love. Now that's the big challenge, isn't it? Absolutely. It's all right doing twenty good things and you know being being very good. But it's that's the big challenge and that's the greatest command of all. So with 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 you know talking about that and and you know how how we react to. To things like you said you know you go some places and and love isn't evident um it's talking in a sporting context where um like you said encouragement's important to you as well um there are certain types of diff captains and leaders in life isn't there so if we use a sporting analogy for a minute there are captains who are very vociferous and they give an inspiring yeah. speech and you go out on the field and you want to run through a brick wall there's other captains who like you said lead by example so they will like I, I'm thinking of Sam Warburton in recent years who, who would like play out of his skin on the field as a, to try and in, inspire those around him um, is, is the is the sort of you were a captain of course for Swansea as well and, and what, what type of captain were you and, and what type of lessons can we learn from that in our life in, in terms of, of you know encouraging one another and, and, and learning from one another and leading other pe others in in, the, in in this right way? Um, I think concentrate on what you're good at. Don't try to be uh, something that you're not. Whatever you uh, is your strength, you know, it's pointless spending five years working on your weaknesses when you're going to neglect your strengths. So I think sometimes we try to cover too many bases in life, don't we? You know, the simplistic, you know, you know, what does the living word of God say? Build your, Don't build your house on sand, because when a storm comes, it's going to fall. So it's like anything, whether you, you're working at your fitness, if your fitness if uh, is 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 quick fix, and they, you have to have a base, don't you? You have to have a strong base. And, you know, um, you know how, how, how many times is it documented in the scripture where, you know, Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock that we we really, and we keep going back to that. Mm -hmm. You know, as as a you know as 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 a Christian, uh, you know, and I don't want to sound pious in any way, but you know, the great thing is that the realization for me the last few years is defeat is never final. You know, and through these difficult times we're going through now, and and I was uh, listening Sunday to 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 someone uh, speaking, and the you, you know we 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 are now and sometimes in your sporting career you 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 have got to go back you've got to um strip everything down and you've got to get back to basics and start again that could be after an injury that could be after a suspension that could be after a sacking uh losing your position and sometimes 
um, with 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 sport, you get dropped. And and do you know what I found, Rob? Mm. Until I was honest with myself, because sometimes when you get dropped, it's always the coach's fault, or uh, you know, it's, it's always somebody else's fault. But sometimes we got to look at ourselves, and we got to realize uh, and, and 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 admit our faults. If admit our mm. fault to go forward, and I had to do that in my career. When when I was thirty, um, I sat on the bench lots of times, and I thought my rugby career was over. I had a lovely offer to go to Leeds. I think it was like fifty five, sixty thousand pound a wow. year, um, because um, you know, at a young family, mm. I thought right, this will secure me for four years. But whatever it was, I, I know the decision I made. And thankfully, uh, you know, my, my my God was was behind it because when I look back, you know, God's providence was in the decision I made because I didn't go um, uh, and I played for Wales another thirty odd times. Now, you know, playing for Wales, it, it's, it's it is life after being a sportsman. Hmm. You know, at the time you don't think it, you know, because when you finish sport, then it's it's. It's, it's it's a lonely place for some people, and you know the elevation, the, you know the stardom that some people get, especially the you know the great professionals. Now they they, they you know it's, it's there's a big void in your life when you come from that. But but I, I I'm uh, you know I, I'm looking back on my career and thinking well there was decisions I made that I didn't know why I was making them, but when I look back I'm so thankful you know for for what happened. Well, I've got a I've got a cracking picture actually, because because the what you're referring to is 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 that when Bowring came in and and made Humphreys captain in your position, and that that's is that the, is that when you lost your place really, and that's is that the well yeah, but but deservedly so because when you look back, you can't you can't admit it, but you know you know Jonathan Humphreys was a good player, he came in as captain, and mm. it was great. You know, I was speaking to to Dean today about how things shape us. I never, I never reacted how I should have to disappointments. And somebody said the other day, you know, we know, we know as, as uh, I shouldn't say we know, because there's people out there that, you know, I don't want to sound, you know, defeat is never final. You know, that's 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 the great thing. You know, that's a great thing about. Uh, but but I reacted, and I remember a, um, a pastor John Bullock saying, "You," he said, "E plus." E plus R equals O. Event, it happens. Uh, no, E plus R plus response equals outcome. And sometimes in life, when we when we respond wrongly to a situation, it always deepens the the, the problem, doesn't it? So sometimes, you know, we, we, we respond negatively and the outcome is far, far, you know, more severe than, than the actual disappointment that we had you know and I and then I look back and I think oh I, I, I sort of acted so foolishly then instead of saying right you know it's happened my mm -hmm. response now is gonna gonna you know determine the outcome here and 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 um you know th those those things I look back on and the great thing is that you know they like you know the world will say oh he's got to learn for himself and you know yeah we have but I I would prefer you know, I, I wouldn't like, you know, people coming behind me to have the same pain, to have, make the same mistakes. Now, you can't live or lead a life for somebody, but the great thing is, is you know, it's wisdom uh, to, to to sort of um, pass on. Sure, I've, I've got a... I've got a picture, right? And I don't know when this when this was exactly. But of course, you played for Swansea and you captained Swansea. You scored a try against the world champions in the famous victory at St Helens against Australia. And Cardiff and Swansea, for those of you tuning in who don't know, were you were fierce rivals, weren't you? And 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 basically, at one time, left the Heineken League to try and play in the English League. There was all sorts of things going on. But this picture, you said that you were passionate, and that was one of your strengths. I love this picture. I'm just going to pop it up there. Look at the reaction there, oh. and, and that's a victory against Cardiff, I believe. Um, um, no, it could be. Is it against Cardiff? Or, yeah, it could be. Yeah. Looking at the sock, oh, well, I, I don't know. know. But the caption said it was Cardiff. Yeah, it could yeah. be wrong. 
Yeah, probably was. I think it was the year that we won the British Championship at uh, Cardiff and Swansea. Uh, we played in the British League and it was fantastic, you know, to be playing mm. in front of full stadiums and I think, um, you know, putting 50 points on Lawrence Delalio's Wasps. <laughs> great <laughs> memories, you know. So No, but not because not it was, like, you know, great players, but yeah. you look back and they were special times from a sporting point of view. But, uh, you know, there was no, no love lost. You know, I, I think, you know, somebody said, you know, uh, or you had a soft spot for hookers, which was generally at your bottom bottom of your garden. And they, they for me, you know, there there was times that uh, you know had some tough games with some tough players around. At the time, you know, there was you know Robin McBride, John John Humphreys, Barry Williams. There's so many hookers, you know, such a confrontational position that um, you know there was you know there was as good given as taken really, and. Um, you know that last that, that was the, the nature of sport, really. And then um, you know people said, yeah, that, you know, or you wouldn't if you were a, a Bible basher or a Christian uh, consistently when you were playing, you wouldn't have been as good a player. I said I would have been a better player. You know, um, he said, well, what's the difference now? Well, I said, you know, as a Christian, you still punch people, but you say sorry. And, um, <laughs> you know, it's uh, that was a joke. I, I, I've mean, got, but, I've got but, Mark. No, but, Mark Small, sorry on that note, says one of your past comments. I really love talking about your rugby. I always like to give rather than receive. <laughs> I don't know if that's true and whether you said it or not, but I like it, Mark. <laughs> uh, well, no, but it's it's you know sport is great, Rob, and you know you see, you see like the recent times now, difficult times for young sportsmen, and mm. and you know we coming into the Christmas period. There's so many challenges in the world, and. You know, rugby was easy. The biggest challenge I've had really is, you know, is 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 walking consistently as a Christian, and um, you know, it's easy, isn't it? I think who was the who was the um, or oh, the rock star said, you know, it's easy to like sort of, you know, sleep with about forty five groupies, you know, smash a television up, um, but you know, it's 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 being a Christian is hard. That's the hard part, you know, and uh, it's, it's easy to do those things, isn't it? You know, um, I forget who, who, who there was some, some rock, rock star. He paints his face. Who would he be? David Bowie? Um, no, no, not David Bowie. Um, oh, um, somebody out of Kiss, uh, by the sounds of it. Yeah. Gene, like Gene Simmons, that, maybe, yeah, something yeah. like that. Somebody like that, you know, and, 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 and you know, it's right. The challenges are, are there. And I, I believe, the, you know, the best challenges are to come. Uh, you know, we've seen now recently, you know, sports people have been challenged. People in, you know, it's been a tough year 2020 for people who, you know, people have lost loved ones, they've lost jobs, family, you know, there's people. And, you know, there's, we, we, we're we coming into this Christmas period now. And, you, you know, we've, you know, many of us, and I'm, I'm going off on this, have never sort of experienced. You, you you know these these situations coming into Christmas and but it does make people think, it does make people think. You know I love Christmas. I love the you know even as a rugby player I love playing Boxing Day and you know Christmas before you know realizing the true meaning of Christmas was always a lovely sentimental time. Mm. Uh, you know family. You know getting drunk and. And you know, enjoy. I still enjoy myself with my family. I still love all those things. But you know, when it dawns on you exactly, you know. So I'm bringing my sport into my faith. It really does hit the gut wrenching, sort of secure feeling of thinking, "Wow, right, Christmas." You know, the, a time of the year where we've seen, uh, you know, people in years gone by. Swapping cigarettes on 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 the battlefront, people stop fighting for an hour. Even you know you, you wow, see in yeah. your villages and towns where people can afford an hello to someone that they wouldn't normally talk to all year round. So what is special? There must be something in our DNA, isn't it? You know, it's a, mm. it's like you know the Bible tells us you know you know it looks that you you know you, you know the amazing birth. Of, of our living, see God coming in the flesh. 
wow, to me and to many, maybe many people listening will switch off now and think it's Google Google, but we celebrate, you know, the two greatest times, it, uh, you, you know, we enjoy the sport, we enjoy the sentiment, we enjoy the, the family get together. It's going to be different this year for mm. many. Mm. So, but then, you know, we, you know, out of, out of these obstacles come great opportunities, I believe. So, you know, the, the, the Christmas time, the celebration, everybody now, are, uh, you know, with the saying this is shit, but we've still got a lot to look forward to. You know, Christmas, you, you know, I've seen the lights up in the village. Everybody likes light. You know, the Bible tells us, doesn't it, that, you know, amazingly, you, you know, Jesus was born in a in a place called Bethlehem, you know, and it was God in the flesh come in to give us the greatest gift of all. Until that resonates in your stomach, you can still enjoy everything else to go with Christmas, but that, wow, that is the greatest gift if we believe and accept. Many mm -hmm. today still don't accept. You know, don't accept. That's choice, and that's a, that's a choice that you have, Rob, isn't it? And I just think, wow, I just, I just feel... You know, never mind what's going on. I don't know the answers, what 2021 is going to bring. Mm. But I do know that Christmas, you know, is, is a wonderful time of the year. Sad for many. You know, we all get yes. that emotional uh, feeling for people that are not with us anymore. But as I said, there's a, there's a, there's a reassurance, isn't there? You know, you know when, when we see, we all get caught up in it, Rob, I expect you have to rush around the shop sometimes. And, and, and somebody said to me years ago, Christmas, Christmas. Take the Christ out of Christmas, and you're left with M A S, Marks and Spencer. <laughs> a lovely shop, a lovely shop, but not worth all the fuss that we go through, is it? But I think it's you know, and, brilliant. And I, I love the sentimental time of Christmas. You know, I I love it, but you know, I'm very thankful. I had a, a chance to go to to Israel um, uh, last year. Mm. And you know, some people might say, "Well, but to actually go, there's a there's a there's a special feeling, you know. It's like like Christmas, you know. If if you know the time of the year, the two most important uh, or or the most enjoyable times of the year for many, some people say, "Oh, I don't like Christmas." Well, I do feel sorry, and and that's choice. Mm. But Easter and Christmas, and when we think that why we celebrate Christmas. People can have different vision, but ultimately Christmas and many, you know, many, you know, people who don't believe would say, well, it's not the right time of the year and, and blah, blah, blah. But the fact of the matter is we're not going to, you know, um, debate the time. The fact of the matter is that Christmas is celebrated worldwide and it's a special time of the year for everyone. And, uh, you know, basically... You know, it, the living word of God is true. If any of it is a load of not true, the whole lot of it is a load of rubbish. And the whole of the Christian faith is a load of rubbish, but for one fact, that Jesus Christ came to earth, born of the flesh, and died for the biggest sinner like me. And when he was, when he was put to the grave, he rose. If he didn't rise then, you know, me and you talking about mm. our faith tonight, we just as well, you know, talk about an ashtray on a motorbike. Absolutely. You know, and that's basically no. it. You know, and, and it's, a, it's a great time to celebrate. You know, like I said, I love the sentiment. I love the sport. I'm still mm. passionate about sport. I still want to be a winner. But sometimes a lot of that can be surfaced because your sporting career finishes. Mm. Uh, your working career finishes. And I, you know, the king of rock and roll was Elvis Presley, wasn't it? And I think he was famously quoted once, and you're a musician, Rob. He said, look, he said, I don't know who he said it to, we all need a friend in the end, he said. And he said, I've chosen Jesus Christ. You know, and I thought, wow, that was amazing. You know, Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, you know, said, well, he, he needs the king of kings in the end. And we all do, don't we? Absolutely. But, you know, it's, it's a great time of the year. I not you know, I don't want to put too many people off, but this is a great time of the year. You know, people are lighting their houses up. They're having bright lights on their house. And really, the light of the world came, didn't he? Absolutely. The and, light and... of the world 
came into the world and you know and I'm not ashamed of that I'm not ashamed to say I'm a Christian or or you know a follower of Christ and and you know I'm not a good person I, I I get lots of things wrong I do lots of things wrong and people might say I'm a hypocrite but I'm a saved hypocrite if I'm taken home tonight then you know, don't don't worry so don't worry about but you know I'm not ready to go yet well, uh, absolutely, I hope not. Absolutely, I've only just started to get to know you properly. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bula says, I love Christmas lights. Uh, Lisa Joanna Westall, hi, hi Lisa, by the way, says we are grateful to be here. And uh, Mark says, Jesus, the light of the world, absolutely. And I just want to pick up on a point you said about Christmas where, you know, you referred to you know First World War where they, where they stopped fighting in one of the most brutal wars ever in the trench warfare to have a game of football. They shared cigarettes, etc. And then also, you know, you said, you know, at Christmas time, people will say in a load to people they wouldn't normally be civil to in the streets. And I, I've been looking, I, I was telling you the other week that I've, I've been recording a, a special version of Ark the Herald Angels sing for UCB and and in that um, it refers to the angels of course hark their old angels sing and I thought well hark their old angels sing we sing that every year what does it mean well it means listen to the angels sing so what a weird first line to sing in a song when you haven't heard the angels singing at the, in the first place so I've written a sort of worship start to the song so before I did that I looked at Luke and and it's, it's, this is what I'm getting at a long winded way of getting there I know but what the angels actually sang was peace has come and jesus of course is known through the bible as prince of peace that's one of his names many names the prince of peace and right now right here there's a lot like you've referred to earlier there's a lot of worry going around there's a lot of anxiety fear we, we talked about it earlier about watching too much of the news and and getting engrossed in it all but jesus gives us as followers of him peace and assurance and it doesn't matter who you are um, there's a book over there by Billy Graham I've been reading called Just As I Am and it doesn't matter who you are watching tonight Jesus Amen. loves you just the way you are it doesn't matter you don't have to do this that or the other as Garin said all you've got to do is believe in his death and his resurrection he claimed to be the son of god he's either lying or he's telling the truth it's worth checking out because who knows what might happen in a couple of weeks if we contract this dreaded virus who knows it's worth checking out and if you haven't checked out what happens why am i you what's the meaning of life if you haven't checked out jesus's claims when are you going to with all due respect it's worth checking it out it's, it's got eternal consequences so if you're tuning in welcome our special guest tonight is Garen Jenkins Welsh rugby legend we've been talking about his career and his faith and um, and if you've got any questions for Garen I'll, I'll happily put the put them to him as well um, Garen um, obviously the going back to the rugby analogy um, it's a fierce competitive place I mean I've got a picture here of you in the front row uh, boiler house I mean that's quite an intimidating place to be there's no hiding place there is there absolutely and that's the world cup quarter final against australia in the 99 world cup um you you had some you talked about um defeat and victory and um welsh rugby in the 90s when you started in the welsh team it, it wasn't very successful having gone through the 70s where we were very successful third place in the world cup in in 87 triple crown in 88 and then it went through the doldrums lots of players going to league and it, it it's part of our dna here in wales it's, it's part of our identity isn't it so i don't know about you if if we lose a game um obviously you've been an actual player but I, i'm it affects me for the rest of the week it's really it's really bad and i've tried to yeah. get over it a little bit but you've had some fantastic yeah, victories right. and and this was a yeah, cracking that's, one that's yeah. in paris um a, a famous yeah. victory the first time since 74 we beat the french in paris 32 31 i think yeah what yeah. was it what was it like yeah to to play to to could that 99 side had an incredible record run at the time of wins and then leading into the world cup what was it like to suddenly have those victories after so long and so much hope because obviously you you grew up knowing this famous 70 sides mm. you probably had it rammed down your throat mm. as a player what was it like to finally start seeing some fruit come through um i think uh, you know you you just said it so so right there rob you know, when you play or represent a team, uh, especially in Wales, you're representing your family, your village, 
And, you know, with that, you carry responsibility. It's like anything, whether you're a, a manager of a, a football team, a pastor in a church, a manager of a company, you carry that responsibility, don't you? And uh, you have to accept that responsibility. So, you, you know, there's times when I lost Rob, uh, you know, I, I took a little bit of time getting over them. And uh, it really, and, and that's one thing, when I retired, um, I I didn't miss that um, feeling of losing because mm. uh, I didn't accept losing uh, well. And, and you know, most people who play a fair level of sport, you know, don't lose it. We're not created to be losers. We, mm. you know, I'm, I'm a victor, not a victim. And you might say, well, you, I'm done very well. But no, that, that vic, you know, what I'm saying is in there, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, dwell too much but when you lose at uh, sport you know you've got you you've got a real whew, heavy feeling of of failure and as you said there about uh, and that's why I quit with my with my um, with my faith I'm not religious because I feel religion is totally different to faith you know religion yeah. as many people say kills and you know there's lovely religious people but I am far from religious and you know as I said there uh, about whoever's listening you know there's there's lovely Christians there's not so so lovely Christians and you know love doesn't just restrain itself to you know I've I've been in rugby teams where you know, you you felt the love and the togetherness and 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 different things. And there's so many. I've got so many friends throughout so many sections of society. You know, different parts of the world. You know, through this um, this in different time that we've been through. I've been speaking to friends in South Africa, you know, Korea, all over. Like probably yourself, from different backgrounds, mm. from different, um, you know, uh, uh, beliefs and different. You know, different. You know, living differently, but as you just said, a great thing to me, Rob, there then, and to to the audience, Jesus loves you just the way you are. Yeah, you know, you know the simple songs. You know, Jesus loves you. Yes, I know. They are mm. they are songs that you can remember your mother nursing you to sleep or nursing your younger brother. Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. You know, little things like that don't go away, do they? No, no. You know, don't go away, and that that's what we should be reminded of because sometimes. We can get consumed through through. I, you know, been very thankful and blessed to have a job all the way through, and 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 and, and have a purpose to get up for. But still, we can get consumed with things, as you said. There, uh, you can listen to mm. too much of the wrong thing. You can get consumed. You can take your eye off the praise. And and a great uh, mentor of mine, John Thomas, and and Chris Jones, told me through this because I was getting a little consumed. Um, you know, through through you know, never faith never wavering, but we can mm. get consumed. He said, "Right, concentrate on the living world. You can't control. I don't know what's going to happen next year. The politicians don't know what's going to happen next year, but we got to submit to authority, trust them. But what did Jesus Christ say? I am an submit there, but I am an authority above. Wow." That is a bold statement, isn't it? But that's what we're going to do because the living word of God isn't some superstition Bible, uh, such superstitious book that you bang your head over it. It's the living word of God, you know, and and it's sharper than a two-edged sword, you know. And and and, and like like you said, I, I I I love people. Like I said, I know people from from all over, like you, Rob. But you know, the beginning in wisdom is the fear of God. And I think that is is so, um, uh, how can you say, um, invaluable then, uh, uh, you know, it's so valuable to us having, you know, joy even through these times. You know, there's going to be times, no, I can't imagine uh, people who have lost people, how mm -hmm. they're feeling coming into Christmas. People where there's decisions that, that they don't know whether they go in for Christmas dinner. But when you think about it, I was put right halfway through this. And a good friend of mine, like many of our, you know, grandparents and great grandparents, uh, he said, look, it is tough, but concentrate on the living word of God, right? Concentrate and, 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 and trust what is real. Yes, this could be happening. This might happen. This might not happen. And he told me about his father 
who would spend three years in a prisoner of war camp in Japan. Mm. And after three months being there, being captive, um, as many brave men and, and women uh, from all over the world did and, and, and sacrificed their lives for, for the freedom that we've enjoyed. And we've, we've had a r relatively carefree uh, freedom, haven't we, up until, you know, we've, we've, we've seen mm. tough times of late. And he said to me, after three months, his dad was told that he would never, ever see the Rhonda post where he lived ever again. Now, wow. Now, that that really picked me up and thought, well, I'm about, you know, I'm working. Um, uh, yes, I've, I've got constraint hours that I can't go to the shop, but man mm. alive. You know what mm. I mean? Mm. It's, 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 it's putting it into context. And, and I, I think sometimes we've got to... We've got to, you know, concentrate and and on 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 the small, valuable things we've got, and we won't get consumed and 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 yeah. et up about different things. Yes, there are people struggling, and my heart really, really goes. But we got to hope. We got to hope that you know the situation will get better. We believe it will get better, but you know, I think there's so much to look forward to, and. Um, I think I've lost myself a bit there. Sorry, Rob. <laughs> no, it's all right. Going on a bit, you know, but I played in the front row a lot. Didn't I? <laughs> Sorry. A lot of bangs on the head, but I'm of sound mind. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Well, I mean, th that is, it's like what you said about, um, you know, earlier on about what what is your foundations built on? You know, are they built on sand that can, when storms come, easily swept away? Or are they built on the rock? And... And for me, I, I too have been consumed by stuff early doors um, during during yeah. the lockdown and stuff, and it and it made me think. All right, then I say this and I say that, and I think I'm I think I'm doing okay, you know, uh, spiritually and, and and all that kind of thing. But actually, the re I was thinking about this the other day. Why do we have communion? Why do we have communion regularly? And it's it's basically to bring us back to that place of remembrance of what Jesus did on the cross and what it means because at the end of the day that is what it, that is what it's all about and as humans yeah. we forget and we drift mm. off and we overcomplicate things and I, I during lock, right, during lockdown I I just I thought oh oh hang on the foundations on sand but there but that one's on rock but oh I thought that was okay and and it's it's about yeah. constantly realigning and I like what you said about you know, not being perfect. None of us are perfect, and it's a, and like what you said earlier about being honest with ourselves. Now, when I faced myself at that point, right, right I'm going to stop watching the news. That's getting in there too much. And then, right, let's have a look in the mirror now. I had to have an honest look at myself and and about everything I did and and what is built on what. You know, what's on sand, what's on rock, what's built on Jesus and the firm foundation that He is. Um that's going to get me through all this and what's on the sand that's going to see me tossed and you know torn up and, and all that kind of thing so I think there's a few well, valuable lessons right. from what you said it's about being honest with yeah. ourselves admitting that we're not perfect and not putting this facade or mask on and being real but also being th that honest means that we can say look Lord I'm sorry I come back to this place again yeah. and, and I'm going to follow you yeah well, we've been meeting Rob uh, as a group of men, uh, you know, and it's a, an, an iron sharpens iron, and there's mm. men from all different backgrounds that meet up, and it's uh, it's 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 fantastic. I think, you know, you just said that, uh, you know, we wouldn't be having this conversation if it wasn't for the past six months, would we? You know, we'd probably, no. you know, a, a, a lot of things wouldn't have take place. So there is massive positive but i you know it is you know the table whether we like it or not in in uh, wales in britain has become a tray isn't it the table has become a tray and i think it wasn't meant to be that as you said there is important unity in any form whether it's a mm. rugby team whether it's a company when it's when it's unified uh, and and there's unity and and it, there there is you know, a blessing in the now to enjoy, isn't it? When the team is all together, they generally win in. That brings success, that brings trophy, that brings more bonuses. And I think the church is no different. That, 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 that you know, for people who are listening that don't believe in God, if there is a God, I'm sure that he would prefer a unified church and a fragmented church um, that is pulling one way and going the other way. You know, it's it's... It's 
it's it's very important, isn't it? And to to see that, and I think sometimes, uh, you know, the table has become a tray, and we have become isolated. And when we become isolated, mm. you know, without sounding too sort of biblical, you know, what does a what does a you know a fox do? Where there's a there's a flock of sheep, he singles out the weakest one on his own, and he takes him out. Yeah. And I think sometimes, you know, when we become isolated then we become vulnerable for lots of things. You know, I, I know that myself, you know, that I, I need to be encouraged. I need accountability and I don't always have it. But I, you know, there, there is no doubt, you know, when we when we're together, you know, and, and everybody is as important. Somebody said to me not a, a while ago, you know, you've got a little finger on your hand. Mm. I am giving this a second thought today. But if you cut it off, <laughs> co, cool, I'd miss it. Yeah. So, and that's yeah, the important yeah. thing. And that's why we should, you know, never mind what's going on in our lives now, we should feel, um, in, you know, we're as important as, you know, you know, the, the boss of the company needs the, you know, the guy cleaning the company. And I, we've all got a role to play. And I think sometimes we must not let anybody lead us to believe that we are worthless because that, that, that can happen. I see a lot of people around, you know, big lads that have never played sport. And, and, and you wonder some, some things here, Rob, has someone discouraged them along the way some, some, somewhere? You know, see a big bloke and I say, well, not everybody needs to play rugby. You do sport mm. now. No, but, and you wonder, have they been discouraged? somewhere along the way and um, that's that's so important that is to me to because as I said early on there was people that give me a chance uh, mm. to play rugby you know I can name a load of people you know I can remember you know first selections to play for Wales first selections to 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 play in different teams you know I went to New Zealand you know another great you know I've been very thankful when I look mm. back the great coaches that I played under I played under Sir Colin Meads who was voted wow. New Zealand's greatest sportsman. And I tell you what, real tough uh, king country farmer. I played under Mike Ruddock, you know, you know, loads of coaches like, you know, Alan Davis, uh, Graham Henry, so many coaches, uh, Ray Process, the John Perkins. I think, the, Graham. <laughs> I think of the, the people and, and people say, you know, who was the best? Who was the best coach? He was... Do you know what? For me, every one of them carried a quality. One may not have been good at maybe presenting. Mm. Maybe one wasn't so, you know, uh, direct in that area. But what I would say is every one of those coaches I played under, I had, a, you know, a respect for areas. Of, and, and, and that to me is important. And somebody said to me, I remember being on a WRU level three coach um, and a friend of mine, David Arthur, he said, um, you know, what, what makes a good coach? Uh, somebody was saying, would you play for that coach? You know, that's important, isn't it? But I, when I look back, and, I, you know, well, this is the truth, when I look at the, you know, I played on some great coaches, uh, and I think they, they called Graham Henry, who was a great coach. I think they nicknamed him the Great Redeemer. He was a great coach, <laughs> but he was no redeemer, I can tell you. The best coach that I played in there, is the Lord Jesus Christ. I tell you what, the you know, the biggest man's man that has ever been, compassionate to all, to the weak, to the and and I I'd, I'd say that right the way through. But but the coaches rugby ways now mm. all carried qualities, you know, and, and, and I just 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 so thankful for 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 them all really. We've got um, the cracking picture I put up just a second ago. Um, this is you with Graham Henry. I'm sorry I've not got any with the other coaches, um, but this is this is um, this was um, first game of the millennium, I think. Right? Against South Africa, wasn't it? I think the first victory. Yeah, the over, first victory. Yeah, over over South Africa. I was at a wedding that day. My cousin Sarah, who may or may not be watching tonight, got married that day, and we were all at a. <laughs> <laughs> little running out to the car to find the score and and all that kind of yeah. thing but what a what a great uh, did you play in the in the record defeat in south africa in in that game or 
were you a part of that side? Yes, I did, Rob. Yeah, so, yeah, I did. I came on. I came on with a few minutes to go. I was the one that made the tackle and stopped the hundred points. Amazing. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but but the great thing, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't that a great example? Yeah. That you brought that up there. That how how you can turn things round in life, isn't it? Totally. That's the lowest I've ever felt in my sporting career there. Uh, and I can remember people crying in the changing room. But thankfully, 18 months or 16 months later, Wales had their first victory. It wasn't 90-odd points. But, you know, and, and I think that really epitomised to me in sport, never mind where we're at. We mm. can, you can turn things around, can't you? And, and I think we're not, um, you know, you know, we're not we're not going to sort of uh, be determined. You know, our our life's not going to be determined by by those failures. And uh, I think that's important, really, to to realise we all have that potential. To yes, you know, we we, we kind of raise them from the memory as you you just brought up. Now I was feeling all right until you said that, <laughs> then, Rob. You know, but um, but no, but it's great. You know, we can laugh about it. But but it's we haven't got to be. Uh, you, you know, that doesn't. Uh, you know. Uh, you know, say what we are really. You know, the it's uh, it's it's in the it's in the memory bank, but it's uh, it's beneath my foot. I mean, it's a, it's it's like a it should be a Hollywood movie on on, on reflection. You know, ninety odd points, and and then to beat them like that quite comfortably in the end, I think, is by more than a score, wasn't it? And so, what, what an incredible turnaround! It, and and it's sort of like is. Like Welsh rugby at the moment's going through a difficult period, and 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 uh, I think it's magnified by the fact that we're all in lockdown and affected by everything that's going on, and crowds can't go there. Um, do you do you see a similar way forward for the for the team at the moment? Have you seen anything that would encourage us as well? Yes, definitely, definitely. Nothing is impossible, Rob. Right? It was impossible with man is not impossible with God. Okay, not everybody's a a believer, but I can always remember. Just you just reminded me there. I remember in school, and uh, you know, I deserved a lot of the canes and the and the the daps and all the rest of it. I had. Um, um, but I can always remember a careers teacher, and it's funny. Don't let, you know, if someone says to you you're not good enough, never don't accept it. You know, think about it. Don't accept it. Don't let it land on you. Because I can remember a couple of years ago, and uh, I don't say this grudgingly because I, you know, I I clean my ash ashes out pretty pretty regular. So sometimes things cake up, and I try to. I try to get the weasel off my foot. But I can remember uh, a careers teacher telling me, you never go you never go further than Pont de wow. And I didn't let it land on me. But thankfully, I lived in New Zealand. I've been to South Africa. I've been to Israel, East Africa, Mozambique. Thankfully, I praise God. But I can always remember those words saying, and, and probably didn't realise what he was saying and I you know I don't hold a grudge he said you'll never ever go further in Pont de Prix well you wouldn't believe this uh, 2013 I was out at a place called Pegasus Bridge which is an yes. integral part of um, you know the armed forces uh, you know winning the battle against uh, Nazi Germany and it was a wonderful and then so happened I was there on D-Day not D-Day but the, the 6th of June 2014 and who comes marching across the bridge was the chap that had said that, didn't it? And I, I did say, I said, sir, I can remember you telling me I'd never go further upon the free. I said, how apt it is that we met you. And uh, I don't know whether he remembered it, but I remembered it. But yeah. but thankfully, I didn't uh, I didn't let it, um, how can you say, uh, you know, epitomize, you know, or, or just, just, just stand in the sand there. I actually... You know, but I remember those words. You know, so like, 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 don't, don't, like, if somebody says to you, you can't play rugby. If somebody says, you, 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 you don't accept it. It's all mm. it's, as as Warren Gatland used to say, and I, uh, I did a few things with Warren, um, and uh, you know, and he, he used to say the story. You know, uh, it's in a funny way. It's only one person's opinion, isn't it? When you're not, when the coach doesn't pick you. So you always believe that you have the ability wow. to come back, and I think that's that's the great thing, isn't it? But but we mustn't, you know, we mustn't sort of um, neglect people's opinions. But it is only people's opinions, isn't it? And uh, you know, the, the the most important thing 
thing is you believing in yourself and trusting uh, trusting the Lord to give you the strength, wisdom, and whatever you need to do it. Thank you, Karen. And in in terms of there's that old sort of um, it's sort of like a, a cliche in in for want of a better phrase that when there's negative sort of comments about the team ahead of a, a game, it's pinned up in the dressing room as a motivating factor. So is is that, was that something? And is that something that motivates you when you get sort of a, an opinion like that thrown at you or about you? Um, I think in a affects different individuals isn't it we're all individually created um some people take the pressure you know if somebody said to me i couldn't do something then i'd work doubly hard to try my best not, not always succeeding but uh that pressure can get to people sometimes uh, um and you, you know uh it, it is it is difficult to handle sometimes but it's it's, it, it, yeah, I think now, you, you know, well, you see the the world of sport now, everybody nearly says the same interview, don't they, before the game, we respect <laughs> yeah, yeah. them, you know, you, you know, whatever they say, you know, you, you just, you know, I think there are, there are genuine people that uh, talk truthfully in the pre-match up, but it's, it's all generally pretty respectful mm -hmm. and you don't get too much trash talking in sport now, but um I think, you know, I, I think, the, as I said early on, Rob, it's the way you react to different things, isn't it, to to criticism. Um, mm. And that's that's where we've got to be careful. And we, I suppose, you know, I, I'm not always uh, right. And there's, there's, there's things that I say, you know, in around life, family life, whatever, you know, you, you, you say something. And, and as I said early on, you know, words hurt some people more mm. than the physical stuff. Because yeah. once you've thrown a word out there, it's hard to get back. If someone gives you a clip, you know, that's it's, it's, it's over. But a word can be quite penetrating to you and, and can really uh, make you... And that's why the Bible says about the bit, the bit in the, in the, in the tongue, isn't it? Why does a horse have a bit hmm. control? There's, 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 there's life and death in the tongue, isn't it? Well, that you know, leads, when people that say things... Sorry, that, that that leads me on. Really, I mean, sport is also, you know, a lot of people make a lot about the mentality and the mental side of sport. Now, at the current state of things, a lot has been made as well by how all this is affecting us. It's um, unprecedented. I've heard that word so many times. Yeah. But oh, ment yeah. mentally, it's been very challenging for lots of people in lots of different ways. Sport, the same. When you compete in at the highest level, like like you did in your career, it, how much of it is the skill level and and the ability and how much of it is the mental side of it and how do and obviously using the analogy in life as well. Um, I th I think the you know the mental uh, ability is an understated um, component really, Rob. As you said, you know the physical you know you can repetition repetition you can get physically stronger. The talented players. You just look at football coaching now and. Uh, had a discussion with uh, you know a great friend of mine uh, the other week, and and you look at the top football coaches, they seem to be they seem to divorce themselves emotionally from any criticism. You know they get a knockdown, they bounce back, and and uh, you know so so that there is a quality um, or a resilience in in in, um, in 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 the ability. You have to have that resilience. To, to, to survive, I think, in, in in top coaching, especially in rugby union and football sports that I know. But um, I, I think that's important. And I, I But the, the, the biggest thing, Rob, right, for a sportsman, and, you know, I don't know whether, is, is, is the rest. You know, we've got some great mm -hmm. sports nutritionists, fitness coaches, etc. But the difficult thing to do is to rest, isn't it? You know, that's not just physically resting. People say, oh, I'm chilling out, but they got like boom, boom music on. They're rushing around about 45 shops and they say that they've undressed. Well, you haven't. The greatest thing is to be quiet, isn't it? I, I wow, as, as I'm talking, you know, one of my one of my difficulties is, and, and everybody is blessed with something. You know, I got friends that, that they must, I must have got on their nerves over the years because one of my weaknesses is I'm not sometimes a great listener. But I, I and it's only crept on me a couple of years ago, you know, when I'd been with friends, and I'm thinking, 
I'm going to leave out that. That's all I'm doing is talking. And as I'm doing now, I know. Sorry, I apologize for listening. <laughs> but I've got friends that are just, li- you know, I think, wow, that is an unbelie- unbelievable, you know, blessing. And, and you don't realize. So what we said early on about not thinking we're important, you know, it's like, like, like I, you know, we all love our mothers because, um, you know, we were connected to them at one point. You know, our mothers, you know, when, when my mother passed the glory, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, um, we believed that she was going to be healed uh, and, and she would recover. But, the you know, the Lord took her home five months after she was diagnosed with lung cancer. So it was a it was a different time for me. I was married. I was, you know, a 50-year-old 50 year old man. And we spoke about things which I never thought that... Um, you know, I would be doing in my life, you know, you always, and, and I look back and I thought, wow, Lord, that was amazing, even right to the end, and not everybody, and I don't want to, like, sound, you know, boastful in any way, because it was a difficult time, I, I spoke at my mother's funeral, and we talked about different things, you know, right until the end, and, you know, my mother, you know, left you with her hands held high in pain, and, and, and but but still, you know, finishing the race, as strong as she could have. Wow. Now, I look at, at 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 that now. To me, that 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 was a you know a, a blessing for me really that I I never thought that that I would have had that and 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 that, you know death is an ugly imposter, isn't it? You know, sad people who have lost people through 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 this period. It's an ugly imposter. And it's you know it's it's an imposter in God's world because we weren't created to die if if the Bible is true you know sin come into the world through Adam and life come into the world through Jesus Christ so if if God is real then we were never created to die but anyway but I can I can remember you know uh, you know the period and I I looked back and I thought wow Lord you have been so faithful right to the end now that might sound warp to someone that you look. But actually, you know, to 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 have the opportunities in my life to say things to to people you love and opportunities is an amazing blessing. Mm-hmm. Is an amazing blessing to do that. And I I just I just think wow, Lord, you you are absolutely amazing. You know, when you when you look at like the the times where you know things you you didn't do things too well, but then. Wow, I just think. But going back to the point, you no, know, like you said about listening, I've gone yeah. off on a, a, a bit there. My mother would just listen to me, you know, they're talking about the sportsman. Mm-hmm. My father would come with me when he was alive, like in a young family. So he'd come to training to Swansea because he'd retired and he'd mm-hmm. come down and, you know, they'd probably listen to me having a rant about some selection or whatever. But the ability... Of, of my mother and my father, I suppose, was in there, to listen. Mm. And how much, you know, you know, I, I, I say it, you know, with, with a warm heart, how much you miss, you know, that, that dependable person who just will just listen. Mm. And, I, and, you know, and, 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 and do you know what, though, Rob? And I don't want to say, like, oh, this is exclusive to me and you, because there might be p- people listening, there might be people that, that think, you know, we're talking a lot, lot, a lot of toodle, but that is the great thing about a living saviour. Mm. You know, Jesus isn't someone that you pull out of a genie pot, and and uh, he is living. He's with us through our struggles. He's with us through our highs, and you know, like I said early on, I failed loads of times, but the amazing thing is. That hand comes out every time, and it's not a license to continue, because you know if you're banging your head constantly, after a while, you you sort of get the message, and you, know, you 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 tend to put the torch on, and you 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 know you 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 don't bang your head so much, and that's that's the amazing thing, and um, you know that's why I'm so thankful for you know it's 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 uh, going into Christmas now. There's uncertain times for everybody in the world at present, mm. and I do, that's not negative. It is. If if anybody can tell me that they've got the answer, and this is going to be the, we don't know. No. But you know, I've got no choice but to put my trust in 
of the Lord Jesus Christ because, you know, it's, that's not heads I win, tails I win, really, isn't it? Basically, although it may not go all my way, you know, and the, and the Bible does tell us that he gives us what we need, not always what we want. Hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Gary, it's been an honour um, to speak to you tonight and, and listen to just the the reality of, of what it means to you and you're so passionate. I've listened to you many times on, on, the, on BBC Radio and, and what comes across, like you said actually, was one of your superpowers playing, was your passion and that comes across so much and um, and just regarding your faith really and, it's, and you know, don't ever diss yourself for talking too much because it's inspiring and I just want to honour you by saying that thank you so so much for this evening um, and just thank you for taking the time out, out of your, your your schedule as well to speak to us we really appreciate it and guys if you've anything tonight's resonated with you about what Garen has said about Jesus and about the faith that we have in him and is, is that something that you've never thought about but oh what's this all about tonight is this something that Maybe you've, you've heard and you've known and you've drifted away and, and you think, I, I need to come back to this. Is it something you'd like to find something more about that you don't know about? Or is it something that is right for you right now? Whatever the answer to that question is, you can message us tonight and we would love to get alongside you and we would love to introduce you to Jesus or answer your questions or support you. Um, and no judgment, no condemnation. We'll just listen. As Garen's just been saying, we will listen. So, guys, please message the, at Gateway Church Abergavenny if you're watching on that stream or, or my streams as well. And we'd love to get alongside you. I hope tonight's inspired you, you know, and and just in, encouraged you. Um, and uh, thank you so much, Garin. And um, we're going to end in just a moment with a Christmas song. You've mentioned Christmas so much. Oh. So we're going to end with a banging oh, yeah. Christmas song. It's a song I, I wrote called Saviour of the World. And it's, it was selected for UCB's Christmas playlist um, just yesterday. So um, that's why we're going to end with that. But it seems apt because you've been referencing Christmas uh, tonight, which is fantastic. I um, just want to get a few comments to you very quickly before we go. And so if you do have a quick question for Garin, um, please pop them in. Um, so there we are. Frank Westall says, more power to your elbow, Gavin. That's my dad there. And... Um, Oh, he, he says Gavin and he says sorry Karen yeah. so there you go um, Fib, oh well it's alright <laughs> Nolan Nicklin says it's better, it's better than Granville I've been called <laughs> Granville in the past <laughs> uh, believe it or not Rob uh, my mother named me after a Russian astronaut really Yuri Gagarin oh, the Yuri first Gagarin. man in space true story yeah she always believed that I was going to go to great heights, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but it, that's where it ended. Honestly, that's where it ended in that's... the name. I couldn't stand my name in school because there was nobody called Garin. Everybody was either Gareth, uh, Geraint. <laughs> well, I've been called some names. So don't worry about it, Mr. Westall. You call me Gavin <laughs> if you want. Brilliant. Uh, Nolan Nicklin says, fair play to you both. Great stuff. Thank you, Nolan. Um, and Gavin Owen says, was Garin ever immortalised as a grog? I can see a grog in the background there, actually. Is that, uh, is that one of you there? Oh, no, it's bath time, that is. <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> it, it's a Welsh, Welsh lady bathing a miner in the bath, I think, yeah. And, oh, I'll show you this for you. No, funny. This is, uh, I think, my. What's it say? I love you, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. I think my children bought that for my wife, uh, Rob. No problem. That was lovely. And yeah. um, there we are. So John Chadwick says his wife Helen loves the description of weasel on the foot. I don't think they've heard that one before. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks, Garin, says Glenn Ingle, Rob and Anna, Fab Knight. Um, and and just um, as we're talking rugby and all that, what what what's your know, what words of encouragement can you give us for the Welsh rugby team going forward? What have you seen over the last couple of matches that can inspire us with confidence? Yeah, I think uh, you know, we're in a transition and we as a team, it's very difficult, isn't it? for the coaches coming in. But I felt uh, Saturday uh, we moved in the right direction. And, um, you know, England, uh, they were 
expected, wasn't it? Many people were talking about a 40 points thrashing for us, but um, I'm not sure whether England can handle the, um, uh, you know, the favourite tag. But I, I was very, very encouraged with, um, with, uh, with, you know, with, with, with what happened uh, Saturday. There's some good performances and lots to work on. So, you know. Work in progress, Rob. A work in progress. That's a good one. That's, I like that. Yeah. I like that. I, I yeah. might actually use yeah. that myself. Uh, I think it's a really good way to, yeah. to look at yourself, you know, and, and, and to approach it. Garen, thank you very much. We, we wish you a fantastic Christmas with you and the family and uh, pray you have a blessed one. Thank you so much for the time taken out. And uh, we're going to leave. I'll thank speak you, to you. I'll speak to you off here in just a moment. But this is a Christmas one, guys. This is Save You the World. Please don't forget to tune in tomorrow. We have Di Woolridge with some live spoken word um, for us tomorrow evening. But this is Save You the World. Night, God bless. All the best. Jesus